guys are all having a fantastic day today. You got a smile on your face and you're ready for a brand new video. If you're not yet subscribed, make sure to click that subscribe button right there and turn on post notifications so you never miss out on any kind of videos I do post here. 90 some percent of the time it is going to be about my weight loss journey, but every once in a while I may throw something entertaining your guys way. Yet again, now that I think about it, all my videos are entertaining anyway. And by the way guys, we are on the road to 100 thousand subscribers here on YouTube. We're like 9,000 away. So I can't thank you guys enough from the bottom of my heart. I really do appreciate it. I appreciate you guys. I appreciate my family. I appreciate Jesse. I just appreciate everybody in the world. So thank you guys so much from the bottom of my heart. But anyways, today I want to have a sit down video where I talk to you guys about how I almost became 300 pounds and everything that basically went behind it to me being the size I am today. Thankfully, I am now on the weight loss journey to losing the weight and to undo all the damage I did myself. So grab something healthy to eat, maybe also water to drink, and uh, yeah, let's just get right into the story about how I almost became 300 pounds. Story time. <sighs> well, we never had this conversation before about how I basically almost became 300 pounds. Thankfully, last time I weighed in, I was at 260.4, and uh, I was pretty close to hitting 300 pounds, which honestly isn't a great thing to say. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, this is what my stomach currently looks like. Yeah, I'm not proud of it. I'm not proud of the damage I did to myself and there is a whole backstory to it and how the whole thing just generally happened. But last night I was having a conversation with Boogie2988 and I just said like, I just looked down at myself and I was like, yo, I am disgusted with myself and what I did to myself. And uh, the one thing he did tell me was to love myself for who I am and uh, just understand that I can still fix this. I can still undo the damage now while I'm young. And honestly, Boogie, I wanna thank you for that advice because it does mean a lot. Hearing that from you, being somebody that has basically gone through this situation, I know you're still battling your weight loss journey and you're honestly such an inspiration to me. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you. So growing up, I was normally the uh, the kid that liked to eat food. <laughs> I feel like we're all the kind of kids that like to eat food, even just growing up. And uh, I was very active a lot. You know, I'd play outside. This was still a lot before we had cell phones, all this stuff. Uh, I would go outside, still play with my friends. We'd play manhunt. We'd play uh, cop and cops and robbers. We'd play hide and seek, tag. Basically, all different forms of hide and seek, if you think about it. Uh, we'd play kickball, football, soccer, you name it, I did it as a kid outside. But then there are some days where I'd be lazy and, you know, <laughs> would just play the PlayStation 1. Yes, guys, I am that old. I was uh, I was alive for the PlayStation 1. So, you know, I'd spend some time playing Grand Theft Auto Vice City, which I never understood why my parents let me play that game at such a young age. It probably explains a lot about me now. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so yeah, GTA, uh, Vice City... Spyro the De Dragon, and uh, some other games back then. So there was times in my life where I could be very lazy at a young age, just sitting inside on a beautiful day, playing video games, whatever. Thinking about it now, growing up, I, uh, I, I ate a lot of food, and honestly, probably wasn't the right food for me to eat. Uh, my family wasn't the wealthiest family. I mean, uh, my mom and dad did a great job supporting three kids and all that, and my... Uh, my <laughs> my parents always would either take us out to eat, we'd go to like this place called, place called Caffrey's in my hometown, which, rest in peace Caffrey's, uh, it just burnt down a few weeks ago, and I always joke that uh, when I'd go there for firearms and all that, that the day this place burns, somehow, someway, I'm going to miss that fire. Lo and behold, I, I predicted that I was going to miss that one. It was a big deal though in that town, that, that restaurant was the go-to restaurant, wings and all that, and I can recall a lot of memories of me and my dad going there, I'd probably get like a Shirley Temple and some wings with my dad, maybe some pizza, and uh, I may or may not have been able to actually at a young age sit down at the bar and drink. Not alcohol, of course, good old water, Shirley Temple's Cokes, whatever, because uh, we were such like normal customers there. 
they uh, they knew us, and especially during the day, it was a big problem. They just put me up right next to my dad, and we'd watch basically football, whatever was going on that day. Yeah, growing up, basically, we'd go out to eat a lot, fast food, whatever. Every once in a while, we'd have a good home-cooked meal. I was the kid, too, that would always go into the cookie jar, whether it was at my parents' house or grandparents' house, and... I just really loved food, I'm not gonna lie. But then, 2005 came. This is always uh, the hard part for me to always talk about with uh, anybody, but uh, I'm usually a pretty open book. And uh, in 2005, most of you guys know, probably a lot of you guys don't because you're new, but um, I lost my dad to colon cancer. And uh, that was a huge ripple effect into my life, to be honest. And uh, so it left my mom to raise me and my two siblings, my brother and my sister, basically on our own for a few years until she met my stepdad. And uh, at that time, my mom wasn't employed. She didn't really have a source of income coming in, especially when my dad was in the hospital. I mean, every once in a while, she'd pick up an odd job here and there, doing cleaning, whatever, to help the family out. When my dad died, she, she had to go back to work and, uh, you know, it meant like during the school days and all that, we'd go to school, eat whatever crap they were serving us there, come home to my mom, doing her best, and uh, some nights, you know, it wasn't the healthiest of all meals, but we'd either have like McDonald's, Burger King, uh, pizza, Chinese, whatever, but it was just to put fuel into our bodies to keep us going. And I'm 100% not gonna blame anything on anybody but myself for my weight. Uh, because it came down to me at that time after my dad died uh, We had nothing but I guess you could say a lot of times junk food in the house and Because of my depression of losing my dad at eight years old. I would eat nothing but junk food which Was not good for me, but it was for more of a comfort with my depression going on at the time and losing my dad basically did a great big deal stress on my end uh, because I, I was legit as mini me if I remember to put a photo up on screen here um, me and my dad look a lot like and <laughs> I guess um, it, it's a cool thing you know I look like my father who uh, it's unfortunately not here but apparently I act like him and all that but losing him uh, did a lot of damage to me emotionally at the young age of eight years old because I felt like uh, cause, as my dad's mini me, I had to um, kind of step up in the house. You know, my my older brother Owen, he was uh, he was destroyed about my dad's death. Same with my little sister, who was only five, and um, you know, I felt like being the one that looked like my dad, that acted like my dad. I had to kind of be like my dad, be the man of the house at the time, and. Uh, eating whatever, whenever, uh, to, to help my depression kind of comforted me um, with the loss of my dad. My mom did a hell of a job just uh, raising three of us uh, for a few years on our own, and uh, we may have not had the best food in the house, but it was food, and... Uh, I will always credit my mom for doing her best to raise three young kids on her own and uh, it was just me, you know, being <laughs> in my depression, just eating food, not wanting to do much anything really. My, my main source of exercise either came from recess at school or uh, ice hockey and basketball. Other than that, you know, I, I started kind of going into this loner phase, which kind of I still have. Um, because of my depression and all that with losing my dad it's uh it sucks being a, sometimes like that but the uh friends would call to want to hang out i wouldn't want to go outside to hang out play football whatever at this point you know because i we moved to a different house after my father passed away we had a big backyard so a lot of my new friends i made in the neighborhood um i'd be like nah guys i'm just gonna stay and play video games whatever a lot of them would then go in, uh, call me, and then ask, be like, yo, can we at least like use your backyard for sports, whatever? I'd be like, yeah, just go ahead, go out there, have fun. I feel like I lost a lot of good friendships along the way doing that, you know, uh, Scott, Pat, Rich, whatever. 
there were three of my good friends growing up. I feel like I lost those, but uh, I know I still have my, some of my closest best friends to this day. Uh, George, Alex, a few other people. So then growing up, you know, still did my sports, played hockey, whatever, dropped basketball because I realized I absolutely was horrible at it. Still with hockey because uh, being a goalie, I was actually pretty good at it. I guess you could say also my size kind of helped <laughs> blocking the net, but uh, that's kind of where I have a lot of my speed from, being able to get from one end of the goal, I guess you can say, to the other. You know, middle school comes, I'm doing basketball, wrestling, and hockey. Drop the basketball, focus on wrestling, hockey, and, uh, you know, middle school, I was like 150, something like that, maybe 145. This is like 7th and 8th grade. And uh, I kept maintaining that weight just due to the fact for wrestling, I wanted to always be able to make weight, whatever. And I did. And uh, I had a, I didn't have the greatest wrestling record. I think I was like 4 and 12. But got four wins. That's all that matters. High school came around. I stopped wrestling altogether. And I just focused on travel hockey, whatever. And that's where like my main source of exercise just still came. Because then I just would go inside after I got home from school or hockey eat, shower, whatever, and then just play video games because I, I did not want to do anything. So that was basically all of high school, you know. Got a hockey team for the school. Uh, that took a few years, but my senior year we got a team. And uh, I was really happy about that. And the uh, first game of the season, because I wasn't probably in the best physical shape then. I still am not now. I can still play hockey, whatever. Um, I ended up getting hurt within probably the first... In the first period, probably like the first 10 minutes of the game, I uh, ended up pulling my groin and took me out for a few games, which absolutely uh, stunk, but kind of at that time opened my eyes a little bit like, hey, I'm, uh, I'm playing hockey still. I should be in better shape for this. And so I did, whatever. Got in better shape. During that time, too, I was going through the fire academy my senior year of high school. I started in the summer and... <laughs> You know, graduated there, whatever, and uh, I maintained a weight probably, I want to say around maybe 210, 220. And uh, then from there, basically graduated high school, got a job with the uh, Department of Public Works there, which was my government job. And I basically then at that time, you know, worked my butt off as seasonal help to then get full time come that January. Did that two years. We had three breaks here on the day, 9 to 9.30, 11.30 to 12.30, and then... Uh, 2 to 2.15. And a lot of times during that break, I'd be eating unhealthy food, but at the same time, I kind of maintained that because a lot of the work was physical. I was either running around the whole day in the parks, weed whacking, doing whatever, paving, um, basically maintaining my weight. Then I left there to do this whole YouTube thing, working with Jesse and all that, and uh, <laughs> you know, I moved away from my family, so I started uh, when I was living on my own, eating McDonald's almost every night, eating uh, Domino's, all this unhealthy stuff, and it kind of almost put me to the 300 pounds, uh, because moving away from my parents and family, I was kind of lonely and depressed again, once again, <laughs> there's that depression, and that time it was being uh, kind of away from my family, and uh, the, the amount of weight I put on during that like uh, whole time period, uh, it sucked because that almost pushed me to 300 pounds. But as you guys know now, I am uh, losing the weight uh, slowly but surely. I am uh, down 10 pounds in the three weeks of this being recorded. And uh, I'm very happy to continue losing the weight and to undo the damage to myself that I did to myself and uh, to hopefully live a long, healthy life. I do want to drop all this weight still. I want to get down to 170. Nothing is going to stop me. I'm going to work my butt off until I lose all this weight. And uh, let this be a life lesson, guys, to eat healthy. Even if you can't always afford it, make the right decisions when it comes to eating. Get exercise, whatever. If you ate the wrong thing during the day, make sure you counter it with a good amount of exercise that day. Even if you go for like a mile walk, whatever. Thank you guys for listening to this video. I don't know how long it's going to turn out to actually be. But uh, with all that being said, I hope you guys did enjoy it. Um, my story about how I was almost 300 pounds. Working on just dropping all that weight. But if you guys did enjoy it, do me a favor. Drop a like on it down below. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on post notifications. And uh, thank you guys for coming with me on my journey here to losing all this weight. Until then, it's been your boy Jeff. Keeping it real. I'm going to log out. I'm going to peace out. Thank you once again from the bottom of my heart for all the support here on the channel. Until then, 
Hop, 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 hop. Peace.